In recent years there has been a trend where old things come back into the mainstream. From cars to furniture, vintage is back. This couldn't be more true for the video space as well. People are searching for that film look, the perfect film emulation. Today we're going to be taking a look at the answer, a plugin that emulates all the parts of film you love. First I'm going to walk you through all the features of the plugin, then I'm going to answer the question, who is it for? The answer did send me this plugin to try out, but it didn't tell me what I could and could not say about it. If you've been thinking about buying the answer and this video convinced you to do so, use code 8 out 10 at checkout for 10% discount on all the answer products. Now let's get into the walkthrough. So we're here in the Finch Yourself version 18. Here in my timeline I have two clips, one of me laying in my bed shot on a 20mm lens, cropped to cinematic aspect ratio um, because I intended it to be cropped like this and a close-up which I shot with a diffusion sheet on the side to get a nice soft uh, roll off over my face. So we're first gonna make our base grade on this shot here. Um, this white shot um, will be our main shot and also our main inspiration for our colors. So we're here in our color page and the first thing we're gonna do is add the enhancer. So right off the bat when I add it you'll see it starts to look grainy. So we're gonna scroll up a little bit and turn off the grain to get a clean image to start off with. So one of my favorite features about the enhancer is that it has a built-in CST. It's very nice to see you have all these options and you can even choose your camera which I'm gonna do. Brand, Sony, Camera, FX3, shot on s 3 S-Gametry Cine, 640 base ISO, so the lower base ISO. Instantly you'll see you get a nice image. What is very nice to see is that they built this into the enhancer, meaning you don't have to have an entirely cluttered node tree, instead you can just have one single node. So first thing you'll see after the input page is the film section. Here's where you'll select your favorite film type. and to be honest, the selection is so enormous. There are so many films in here which I never heard of, like this one here, the Arvo Chrome, uh, Chrome UT uh, Daylight something, you know? You have all these crazy options to create unique looks and that's a huge plus for me. So for now I'm gonna actually select Kodak Aero Color for 125 ISO. I really like this film, it has nice skin tones and nice blues, so we're gonna use this one. Uh, we're not gonna push and pull, but you can push and pull it if you wanted to. You'll see it reacts how it would probably react in the lab, I assume. I don't know this film, so I'm assuming it will react the same way. But for now, we're gonna leave it at the standard setting. Now there's a new tab in the enhancer, which I haven't seen before, which is the film developer section. Basically, it allows you to develop your film in certain ways you would be able to in the dark room. You can add some extra contrasts and you have a gamma correction node to recorrect the gamma after you add some contrast. I'm not gonna do that but it's possible. The color separation slider which will change the color separation based on the contrast as well so you can see it slightly turns into a more separated image if you look at the scopes here. But for now I'll keep everything to normal. You also have a color boost. In the Finch itself there's also a built-in color boost and I don't really feel like it as much because the color boost in the Finch yourself is also one of those tools I never use. I know there are many ways you can use it and in a very good way but in my opinion I'd rather just add more saturation than use something like color boost. So next up is my one of my favorite panels in the enhancer and that is film compression. So for example as you see here that the highlights are rolled off kind of digitally where they become a little bit more clippy in the highs as well as in the back here where they become a little bit clippy. You'll see when I zoom in here and I turn on film compression, boom, the highlights get pulled back a little bit giving us more dynamic range but looking at the rest of the image you'll see it stays perfectly intact. As well as on my face you'll see that it slightly reduces the highlights but it leaves the other sections of the image intact. You can also add, add some more color density in the highlighted areas, uh, more blue when you turn it down and for example a little bit denser and warmer when you do this. I prefer it warmer so I'll keep it like that. This one we're gonna skip over for a bit and I'm gonna come back to after we have our main look done. So after a movie is shot on film, developed, edited, it will be printed back onto a specific kind of film to be projected in the cinema. There are various types of film and the enhancer has 
the selection of the most popular ones. We have Cinnamon Film Log for color grading, obviously. Um, Fujifilm Kodak 2383, the most popular one. Kodak Endura Glossy Paper, which usually is used for photos as far as I know. I'm gonna go with 2383. And instantly you'll see there's a lot more contrast going on and the blacks are completely crushed down. So what we want to do is add a little bit more exposure back in to get back to this level here. If we check the before and after, we'll see we go from a very lame look to a very nice and filmic look already. Um, here we can also increase the color density, which is something that film does. So the more saturated something becomes in negative film, the darker the color becomes, the less saturated the lighter the color becomes. Color density is meant to mimic this and it will lower the luminance of the more saturated sections. So if we start to pull this slider up, we'll see that the more saturated areas like skin tones become more dark and deep. So we're gonna pull it up now. And you'll see that my skin tones go to this nice rich color as well as the greens in the back and all the blues in the sheet. So far we already have a really nice look and I'm already quite happy with it. So you as well have a color head for you to completely split tone your image, control all the colors in the highlights, low, uh, in the shadows, in the midtones. Also a YMC color head, but I'm not gonna use it. Next up is film grain. Obviously there already is film grain in DaVinci Resolve and honestly I'm gonna say it, it's not that great compared to this one. This one gives you so much control over all the individual aspects. It gives you also control over where the grain will appear. So if we turn this on, we'll see that we get film grain on the image. It already gets a nice filmic look, but it's way too strong. So we're gonna lower this. We want it to appear a little bit less in the shadow area. So what we can do actually, is go to shadows, pull them down, and you'll see it cleaned up the shadow area. My face is now nice and clear, and the rest of the image is still nice and grainy the size of the grain a little bit to get more rough look and one of my favorite features of the grain is the film resolution if you pull it up you'll see you'll get a very sharp grain and also a very high definition detail but what i like to do is pull it down a bit because after all you're dehancing the image so we're gonna pull it down and you'll see it becomes a little bit more blurry then we put the size down a little bit to make it a little bit bigger so right now i think we have a nice balance between having a nice grain but also retaining detail in the face and in the lower shadow region where most of my face sits in this angle also that nice blur you would expect from film one thing i do like to do with my grain is go to the chroma slider and pull it all the way down i don't like color noise colored grain and stuff like that because the digital footage already has a little bit of chroma going on somewhere and it makes us in less pleasantly in my opinion. Next up, we're gonna be adding a little bit of elation. We're gonna turn it on and instantly we'll see slight results of very, in very natural places where halation should appear. The halation that comes with the Finch Resolve is quite bad and honestly this appears on the right side as well. Halation should always appear on the darker side of the highlight, as you can see, and never in the highlights. So for me, I'm going to change the hue a, bit, a little bit to um, a lighter area here. Um, I'm going to turn down the local diffusion a little bit, but turn up the global diffusion. While I'm also going to pull down the impact a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle. And there we go. We have a nice halation going here and here in the areas where it should be. And now we have a section for Bloom. This basically would replace your um, ProMist filter and give you some Bloom on the image. In my opinion, I prefer the ProMist look, but it's a very nice addition on top of it also. And I own a lot of lenses which are vintage. And sometimes those lenses can be very bloomy by themselves, way bloomier than a ProMist. But some of them, like this one, are really, really sharp. If we turn everything off, you'll see that this is quite a sharp lens. You gotta keep in mind that this lens is from the 1970s. It's older than me by over 30 years. So yeah, it's a 50 year old lens. We're gonna add a little bit of bloom. We're gonna put the source limiter up. As you can see, it will lower where the bloom will appear. Also has the impact. And now we have a little bit of bloom on the facial area and stuff like that, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna lower the diffusion a little bit slightly on the face and on the highlighted area. I'm not gonna touch vignette. There's also film breath option, which will give you 
Um, slight exposure changes over time that randomly occur in natural film, of course, because you cannot evenly coat an entire roll of film perfectly. You have gate weave, which basically means that the film weaves a little bit in front of the gate, which gives a little bit of a jiggled effect to the film, also randomly. These things give a little bit more of a natural look to your footage and more Super 8 film, but like on the higher end films like the 35mm look where I'm kind of going for now, you wouldn't see that. So for the next section, the monitoring, they really didn't have to include this in the plugin, but I'm so glad they did because I love it when making exposure within the plugin. So for this, I'll quickly turn off my cropping to get a full frame. Then we go back here and we'll click on false color. Here we'll see that we have one on one under the nine IRE, 50 and zero and all the colors, of course. We'll see that the highlights are clipped out here and on my face and the black areas are black, which you can see by zero and 109. So what I see from here and what I want to do is make sure that this area, this area and this area are not red anymore. So from here, we are going to go all the way back up to the expand section, which we skipped earlier. As it's turned on, we're going to go to white point and drag it to the right until the red areas disappear and turn into orange or yellow. This will make sure our overexposed areas are not completely blown out and clipping. If we go down now to false color, we'll see we have a very pleasing roll off in the highlights and overall a more cinematic image that stops at around 800. Looks very good and we go from this to this. So now we're going to quickly match up the shot with this one. We already have a nice frame. So we're going to hover over the first shot, middle click on the mouse scroll wheel to copy the settings over to this shot. It already looks quite good, but we'll notice that it's way too flat and it doesn't match the other exposure. So the very high areas do match, which hit around 800, but lower areas do not match. So what we're going to do is drag down the exposure a little bit on the printed film. I'm going to drag up the black point slightly to make the black areas a little bit darker. And now if we get a frame where I look into the lights, you'll see we have a very nice frame. So the only thing I would fix here is adding a little bit more saturation since if you look at this shot, we'll feel like it's a little bit more saturated than this shot. What we can do is right click it, add node, serial before, click on the node, and drag up the saturation a little bit to our liking. And now we have a more natural skin tone going on and very nice high colors. My real eye color is not that gray, it's quite blue, but not this gray. And color grading, you know. <laughs> so what are my final thoughts on the plugin? Overall, it's an amazing plugin. It, it became my go-to tool for color grading. Um, I build these complex node trees and often I don't have the time to do so, but I still want that nice film emulation. Sometimes for even easier projects where you don't need a film emulation, it's very nice to get the color just right. You can get a normal transform from Log to Rec. 709, but still get those nice tones that you would see in cinema cameras. And that's a feature I very much like of it. Overall, this plugin is definitely not for your average creator or the person who is a hobbyist. This is definitely a tool you would only buy if you're a professional or if you have the money to spare. Because all these features exist in DaVinci as well. Maybe not as good as the answer because it's a specialized product, but for your average creator, that's good enough. Overall, if you're planning on buying the plugin, make sure to use code 8010 on the screen right now at checkout for 10% discount. That was the video, hope you enjoyed. More videos coming soon. I was a bit sick lately, but um, yeah, it was what, what it was. I'm going on vacation to Portugal, looking very much forward to that, but yeah, lots of videos coming from that. And also Austria still, I shot so much footage there, but I still haven't edited it into videos. So apologize for that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, lots of stuff to come.